We're going to see backfilling with Pi Server 2012. Now we've sped up the video about two and a half times to get through it quickly and if you need to stop and replay go ahead and do that. So to begin with I have two machines here. I have an interface machine and I have a server machine. Now the server machine I am running Pi Server 2012 3.4.390 right there. Now on the interface machine I'm going to be running the Pi UFL interface. So that's the universal file loader. It's, it's an interface that reads text files, essentially. And I see in my data folder here, I have three text files. And what they have are the data that I'm going to be backfilling. So this is data that doesn't exist in the Pi server and existed before I installed the Pi server. And I want to put it into my Pi server. So there's a tag name, there's a timestamp from before my Pi server existed, and there's a value. And I have 15 different tags here, and then I just have a lot of data. So a whole lot of data in this in this text file, and then I have three different text files. Okay, so back to the server. The first thing we're going to do to get ready for backfilling is we need to create tags to send this data to. So what I have here is I just have a text file that is a PyConfig script. Um, now what this does, it just creates 15 basic float32 tags named backfill01 through 15. That's it. I'm going to run a bat file here, which will just execute that pyconfig script on the server and create those tags. So zero records in air. I'm going to come back to my server and look up my tags. We can see backfill. There they are. And of course, when we select them all, we see point created because we just created them. There's no data in those tags yet. Okay, so the next thing we need to do on our server is create an archive because remember this data is from before the Pi server existed, so we need to create archives into the past. So we create create new archive, then we got this handy option in PyServer 2012 for multiple archives for backfilling, where you just say what the time range is that you're going to be backfilling into, how big you want those archives to be, and the PyServer will take care of the rest. Here, so I'm just going to cancel this option. All right. Now the next step is you want to take a backup before you do any backfilling. Uh, do a full backup of your PyServer before you do a backfill operation. That's important. Back on my interface, I'm going to be loading up the Pi UFL interface. And I've already installed it, but um, we have a config file that we'll share with you in the description of this video. It's th this is where it is on our machine. Um, but that config file directs the UFL interface to find those data files I showed you earlier. So we're just getting ready here. Looks like the interface is all ready to go. I'm going to open up a command prompt and look at the, the flow of data out of my interface by opening up the 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 buffer queue so by buff by buff ss dash qs to look at the queue statistics of the buffer so this shows me the data flowing out of the interface to the pi server and we can already see there's already some data flowing now i'm going to start the ufl interface which will begin reading from those text files and begin sending backfill data to the pi server and we can see in the back in the buffer queue this should bump up soon right now it's still in what it was so it's still sending what it was sending. And I'm going to open up a, uh, a process book screen. And we'll see those backfilled tags fill up as time goes on. So I'll set it to the three-month time scale I'm backfilling into. I'll find my pi tags. Yeah, there they are. Select them. I'm just going to make a trend with those 15 tags in it. Just like that. And we can see they're already starting to backfill in. Yep, yeah, so you can see that the data flow is bumped up quite a bit now. So now the UFL interface is reading out of those text files and just sending it to the Pi server. And if I refresh my trend, I'll see it filling up as time goes on. Okay, now back on my server, um, one thing important to note about this is that with Pi Server 2012, you don't need to delete the point created. If you remember that when we created the points, that point created point on the tag. Previously, in previous versions of the server, you needed to delete it. Pi Server 2012, you don't need to do that. It automatically takes care of it so that all data goes through the snapshot table. And if you don't know what the snapshot table is, don't worry about it. But we're just showing right here that the data is going through the snapshot table, which means that any exception and compression settings you have will be applied to this data. So if you're applying some compression or filtering, it's good to go with this. You don't need to do too much pre-work for backfilling. All right, back on my interface, I can see that looks like the UFL interface has processed two of the text files already, and it's working on the third one. And if I refresh it, 
Yeah, it's filling up quite nicely. Yeah. And we see the current values are regularly updating as data comes in. And we are almost done. Okay. And once we're finished backfilling, the, the buffer should just jump right back down to the rate of data it was before. And now if we zoom in here, we can see the fidelity of the data that I was backfilling in. So it was pretty fine. And we can see we just filled up three months worth of data at this density. Yeah. And if I bring up the, the buffer queue, we can see that the buffer has now dropped back down to sending the, the regular routine amount of data, the regular rate. See that right there, about 126, 122. And that's backfilling. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with PyServer 2012. Enjoy.